Hello everyone, welcome to the Bad at Magic YouTube channel, the companion to the Bad at Magic podcast where Ben and I demonstrate just how bad at magic we are. And today I figured we'd kick that off with a little bit of uh, Theros Beyond Death standard. Uh, I am going to be playing a little deck that I've been brewing called Bant Flicker. Uh, this is the kind of deck that Ben hates because it doesn't win outright and doesn't inherently isn't inherently powerful, it's just playing a lot of good synergies. So the idea of this deck is we want to use a lot of comes into play triggers, a lot of comes into play triggers, and we're going to keep recurring them over and over with cards like Flicker of Fate, uh, Charming Prince, and then also Thassa Deep Dwelling, where at the end of the turn, remove a creature, bring it back into play. And we're going to grind out a lot of value with Knights of Autumn to take care of troublesome enchantments or gain some life or just make big creatures, and our Risen Reef to draw cards and put lands into play, uh, Elite Guard Mage is a real MVP, drawing cards and gaining life. Frilled Mystic is a lot better in this deck now that Theros Beyond Death has come out since it comes down, counters a spell, and then later on we can flicker it for a white and a colorless to uh, hard counter another spell. Cavalier of Dawn is great, blows up anything that gets in the way. Also when it dies and get back enchantments like Banishing Light or Thassa Deep Dwelling, and then Time Wipes just to keep the game under control. You see we don't really have any really huge finishers, the idea is we're just going to grind out more value than our opponent over the long game. Uh, it's a Bant mana base which makes it a little bit troublesome. Uh, with the current standard and the lands that we have available but uh, we're going to play a couple of standard best of ones and we're going to see how it goes i am not a professional streamer uh, i don't usually record or play video games online so this is a new experience for me if you have any feedback please leave it in the comments we will read it at some point i'm going to do my best to narrate everything that's going on but again this is not my full-time job so go easy on me our opponent is going first, which seems to happen all of the time when I play. We've got three lands, all three colors that we need, a Banishing Light and a Knight of Autumn for the early game, and then later on if we start drawing lands, we get the Elite Guard Mage, so this looks like a good hand to me. Okay, that's not good already. Red-green aggro, so they're going to come out of the gates swinging. So what we're going to want to do is control the early game. Hopefully the Banishing Light will stall us out long enough to find some of our better answers. Flourishing. Still don't have a turn two play, so this can come into play tap, no problem. I haven't seen Bond of Flourishing in, in a Gruel deck, so that's making me think that this might not be what I originally thought it was. I wouldn't be surprised to see a third color come down, maybe Elementals. I don't know. Oh, there's Domri. Dombey's going to fight things. That we don't like. Is he worth getting rid of? Hmm. Creature control will be plus one plus zero. I'm going to go ahead and do the Knight of Autumn, and I'm going to plus uh, put the plus one plus one counters on her. The idea being that if he plays something big, we can get rid of it with the Banishing Light, and then swing through to hit Domri. Uh, unless it's like a questing beast or something, in which case that's just a bummer. So the untapped fourth mana makes me think, interesting, two colored fires of invention. Okay, Beanstalk trying to get another land, and that's his second spell for the turn. So Domri's going to plus. Interesting. Oh, that's not good. We really wanted another land there. So in this case, I think I'm going to just swing into Domri and then Banishing Light, the fires of invention. And then if he plays another fires, then we can later on we can... Oh, you know what might be better? Yeah, I think actually instead I might just attack the Knight of Autumn into Domri and then flicker it with the Charming Prince. Well, I know I'm going to attack Domri, so let's do that. Uh, I do want that Charming Prince to scry so we can find some lands. Yeah, so I think we're going to Banishing Light the, the Fires of Invention here. That should hopefully slow our opponent down. Let's see what he plays here. I've only three cards in hand. I'm not super worried about it. He needs to play a creature or else Domri's going to be dead next turn. <laughs> Sleepy Jenkins. Just noticing the, the opponent's name. Scarven Hellkite. 
live flyer. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> well, no more attacking for me, and I did not draw a fourth land. So let's get this charming prince down to scry two. Well, there's some of the lands that we want. Do we want to keep them both? Now, we do have a basic island already. I think we do want to keep them both. Only two white sources? Now, screw the basic and keep the castle of Antris. Hopefully, find another white source for our Cavalier of Dawn. No attacks. And what does this do? Uh, deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. Oh, it does have the plus one, plus one counter. So we could blow up my Charming Prince here if we wanted to spend mana on that. I don't imagine that our opponent swings in because then he's just sacrificing his Domri. He's probably going to keep the Hellkite back on defense and just keep tapping the mana as a... It is a good mana sink for a Fire's deck to just deal two damage wherever he can for the four mana repeatedly throughout the game. Oh. This one. Now this one he'll attack with. Ooh, attack with both. Yeah, that makes sense since I'm now dead on board. Oh, and then they'll fight. Sack, cashing in the Dom Ray. Oh, this is going to be the last card in our opponent's hand. Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, that's pretty good for our opponent, too. Well, in that case, we're just going to have to throw down an Elite Guard Mage. Hopefully draw into some answers. <laughs> it's just going to be Guard Mages on top of Guard Mages, I think don't think this is enough to stabilize. We can keep throwing down the guard. I think we're going to not block with the guard mage this turn. Take the nine, go down to three, but then we can play another guard mage. So that way we can potentially block and kill one of the hell kites next turn. So I'll be at three, gain another three, put it at six, five. Okay. Assuming he doesn't play anything else, or assuming the, th the bone crusher giant doesn't go face. He does also have the two damage that he can do this card in Hellkite. Does that go face? One or two targets. It looks like it. So I'm probably yeah. One damage to each. Oh, and then he bone crushers the elite guard mage. Swings for nine, puts me at two. That's a pretty good play. Here's the planes. What does that save me though? So the planes allows me to play the Cav one of the Cavaliers of Dawn, which can blow up one of the Scargan Hellkites, gives him a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three is effectively blocked. Then he's still got four in the air, and I've got no way of no other way of gaining life this turn. So in that case. Any lands does he have? Okay, so I have to play the Guard Mage in order to just live for another turn. Ooh, there's a banishing light. Okay, so if we can survive this turn then we still probably die the turn after that <laughs> that's the only problem I've had with this deck sometimes is if my opponent gets a really uh, good start uh, I have trouble catching back up if we can get into the mid or the late game like this this deck is really good at grinding out value against other control decks we will block here and I'm still just super dead yeah he's got the four mana to go face Oh, and he's got another Bone Crusher anyway. Well, that was a quick first game. We can see why we're bad at magic. So one thing I will say, like, one reason I am bad at magic is on Arena, I am doing my best to be free to play. Uh, anybody who listens to the podcast knows that I've got two kids and not a lot of time to game, so... I don't pour a ton of time or resources into it. I just do the best I can. Um, I'm doing my best as a free-to-play player. Once uh, I do go first, but I need that blue for rivers and reef. I don't have it. Hit, um, experience has taught me that a hand like this with this deck is going to punish me by not drawing the color or another land. So I'm going to mulligan. This isn't great, but it is only representing two of the colors, and I have both of those colors, and the Charming Prince should help me scry into more lands. Uh, multiple Banishing Lights are probably not necessary. Hopefully, let's find out. Vantress is going to come into play tapped because I don't have an island, so we're going to play that first. Yeah, it's a good, good, oh, good game. 
<laughs> I meant to say good luck, but that's not a, one of the options. Oh, this is going to be that mono white life gain deck that I keep seeing. I have played against that deck quite a bit, and it kind of stalls. The games tend to go really, really long. Oh, I want both of these, but I want them in this order. Thank you. If we can get the Risen Reef down and our opponent can't remove it, we won't attack into it. That's what I thought. Yes, I'm going to keep the Risen Reef, and we keep Flicker up for reasons. We can surprise block. That might be a good idea. We're going to swing in here and try to bait the Ajani's Pride Mate to swing face on his turn. And if he does, we can flicker the Charming Prince to untap it. We get the comes into play trigger so we can either gain life or Gideon Black Blade. Seems pretty good. You have something indestructible. Indestructible until the end turn. So even if I do untap, he's still going to gain that life. Let's see if he swings with the Pride Mate. That's the goal here. Okay. Not sure. The damage. No, the life gain trigger, so it'll probably kill the Pride Mate. What do we want? Let's see what's underneath the Risen Reef. We do not need another Charming Prince. Ah, that's what I thought. Trigger goes on the stack and he's gone. Risen Reef. Get another land. Oof. Well, that'll help if we don't draw a land. Of course, Gideon's just going to punish us over and over. Next turn, we can banish and write Gideon away so we don't have to worry about it. Sun's Nemesis. She's just going to, I'm guessing, soldier tokens, or is he just going to put the plus one, plus one counters? It's two plus one going for the damage. Well, no blocks. That's for sure. Castle Ardenvale for. Alright, I would love to play Fossa and start flipping the Risen Reef, but unfortunately, we're just gonna have to get rid of this. Gideon, we're just gonna take too much damage. Goodbye. No attacks. Next turn, we get a Fossa and Risen Reef. Hopefully, that'll start generating the, advan the advantage that we need. I'm guessing make tokens. Hey, buddy. I was so mad. The season ended with I only had the uncommon fox. No blocks. Down to seven. Oof. Charm's Pride Mate gets bigger. Favorable passage. Let's thin the deck here. What do we need? Probably need more. Uh, we always need more white, just in case we draw that. Yeah, in case we end up with a Cavalier of Dawn in hand. Get Fossa Deep Dwelling onto the table. There will be no attacks. <laughs> and then we will flip Risen Reef. Risen Reef is probably going to die this turn, so let's get some good value from him. Oh, that's good value. We get the Guard Mage down. Now we gain a six life next turn with Thassa. Assuming we're not already dead. Plus two plus one. Indestructible and then plus two plus one. It's a lot of damage. Well, I will block the pride mate here. We don't have trample. I'll take three. Give her my own bashing light and then. A legend rule his Gideon. <laughs> oh, Cavalier of Dawn. Okay. So. These four. Ah, I can Cavalier and blow up two of his permanents, but it gives him a 3 3. He's going to attack with two things this turn. I've got to gain the life. Ugh. I think we're going to be too slow again. I need to draw an untapped land here so we can flicker the guard mage again. Ooh, that counts. Okay, so this might help stabilize us here because then we can flicker the guard mage to prevent it from dying and get even more life out of it. 
And let's go with green, so we don't have enough of it. No attacks. Boss is going to do our guard mage trick. Where we draw? Charming Prince is good too. All right, here's Gideon. <laughs> now we get to block with Guard Mage and then flicker it to keep it and still block the creature. We are falling behind on board, but with the Guard Mage on the table, I'm comfortable flickering or playing the Cavalier and then flickering it to destroy some of these problem permanents. Resolve. So looks like we're going to take seven this turn. Block the pride mate. Take it from Gideon and the other. It's indestructible. Two attackers. All right. Two blocks. We block here. Then the four damage. I ah, didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> he keeps giving him priority, so he's got some kind of instant. Uh, maybe the omen that gives him tokens, I would, if I had to guess. As long as it's your turn. Okay, so he won't be indestructible on my turn. That's important. And who is it? Sacrifice, target creature, or enchantment gains protection. Okay. We'll play Green Pool tapped. And we'll play the Cavalier of Dawn to get rid of Gideon because he is really starting to drive me nuts. Goodbye. No attacks. And now the question is if we target, well, we're definitely going to do the Cavalier of Dawn. If we target the Pride Mate, he could sacrifice the. Al Said of Life's Bounty to get to give it protection. In which case we'll have to chump block it, but I think I'm okay with him getting rid of that protection right now anyway. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing. There it is. Pro white. And there's that omen that I called. Soldiers. So we're going to chump block the pride mate. Ooh, can he get rid of the cavalier? If he does, that's a problem. Oh, he totally can with a giant killer. All right, so nope, with Elspeth, we are dead on board again. Whew. This deck looks worse and worse. I swear, I've won a lot of games with this deck. <laughs> it just doesn't look like it right now. <laughs> Three, five, seven, yeah, there's the game. I'm out. It's been helpful that game would be Time Wipe. I wonder where those were. Oh, just my, I'm tearing down. Again, really bad at magic. <laughs> oh, well, we got golden experience. So like I was saying before, I am a free-to-play player, so getting these uh, these quests done is actually very, very important. And I'm not playing any black spells, so that's problematic. Let's do one more and see how we can do. Hopefully we get paired up against like a slow control matchup and then we can just grind out the game. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. I like to play slow thinky magic. Not all this there's all this aggro nonsense. Okay, this looks pretty good. Risen Wreath, it doesn't come down until turn three, but we've got all three colors represented. So let's keep this. And we're already going to lose. <laughs> oh dear. That's, this is not what we wanted to see. Oh, Robert the Rich. <laughs> oh, Knight of the Reliquary. Oh, Knight of Autumn is really good in this matchup, too. Well, YouTube, 
you're going to see me get decimated by mono red. Now, I, I say that. If we can get to a point where elite guard, mage hits, guard, elite guard mage hits the table, we could theoretically stabilize here. Just because the guard mage will end up just gaining us so much life. Ah, took the first leaf. What is this now? Devotion to red, non-token creature until dies, create a red one, satyr. Wow. So what am I looking at? Four, five, six, seven, eight damage next turn? Whew. Man, this got bad fast, didn't it? Well, I can't, I absolutely cannot live through this, so this has got to go. Risen Reef value is just going to have to wait. We have to survive first. The guard mage gets down, the guard mage blocks really well. So let's get the guard mage on the table. Taking four is better than taking eight. Barber of the Rich still has, what does he got? Oh, the Knight and the Risen Reef. He can play either of them. Ugh. Oh, I guess he got a land. Yep, he got a Hop of Fountain that time. I'm actually going to play that and destroy Banishing Light. Oh, that's genius. Wow. See, my deck looks really good when other people are playing it against me. Ridiculous. Gotta pay two life. I think I'm still pretty dead. Two, three, four, five, six. No, I think I can live through this. Tax with everything. There's one damage. Yeah, two shocks. Um, let me think. So math is for blockers. So I've got to get rid of this robber of the rich, which will put me at what? One, four, five, four, five, six. Seven. He's got two shocks that he can play, so he's got two extra damage here. So if I block four, one, two, three, four, five. So if three plays two shocks, I've lost. Damn boy. Whew. Well, just having no fun. No, not even having fun. I think we're gonna switch decks. Here's what we're gonna do. Um. We're in the lower tiers. Well, I am in the lower tiers of constructed play, so it's not surprising that people are playing fast aggro to try to climb the ladder. Uh, this deck is kind of the same concept. We're looking to flicker a bunch of creatures to try to grind out value, but it's a little more controlly. Uh, it cuts down on green, so we just go to two color mana base. I'm evolving Wild Xanth Fable Passage to try to thin out the deck. A bunch of time wipes again, Banishing Light uh, to Fairy for the flash matchups and for some bounce. Uh, Aven Eternal is nice because it flickers and we just grow our army token, which is good to get the two for ones. Uh, Flicker Fade again. Omen of Seas is great to even out our draws and just keep cards in our hand. Other than that, Charming Prince, deputy, one deputy attention. I would like to have more, but I just don't have the wild cards for it. <laughs> Cavalier of Dawn again, and then one Dream Trawler as kind of the finisher, the closing out the game. So let's see how the two color version does and to be fair i have played this i think maybe one time so i don't really have a good idea of how well the deck's going to perform uh, part of me thinks that there's not quite enough creature value in it i might have too many non-creature spells so we'll see how it goes well i've got both colors I've got two Charming Princes to help even out the draw, a Time Wipe if the aggro game goes crazy, and then a Guard Mage. So I'm going to keep it. Okay, looks like some version of either black Mono Black Devotion or the Rakdos Aggro deck that I keep seeing. We are going to run out uh, the Fabled Passage first, just because that land's going to come to play tapped. Oh, okay, so there's our Rakdos colors that we were waiting for. And this is past prior to me because I have this to do. Wow, is he really not going to play anything this turn? That's good for us. It'd be really nice to end this video by winning one game. That'd be great. Let's throw out a Charming Prince and Scry. Just to make sure we're going to get what we need. I don't think we're going to need another Time Wipe, but I'm going to keep that land just to make sure that we get enough of it. was probably wrong. I'm probably going to want multiple time wipes here. I guess we will find out. Three banishing. 
I think I'm going to block here to get rid of the gutter bones. Because he's just going to try to grind out, like, my life total, right? Cards in hand I'm less concerned with. And I'm going to get rid of his card draw engine with Vanishing Lights. One thing nice about uh, Vanishing Light is our flicker spell. Uh, we'll flicker enchantments as well. So if later on we find something that's much more important to get rid of, we can flicker the Vanishing Light and give him the lesser threat to get rid of the bigger one. Okay. Ooh, that's good value. So I think what I'm going to do here is just run out to Fairy and put it back in his hand. Go away. Try again next turn. Let's go ahead and crack this. Obviously, we're going to want to get blue, just to even out our colors. That feels like a good turn to me. Drawing into Dovin's Veto is nice for later on. There's our friend the Mayhem Devil again. Ah, part of me just wants to time wipe here. Mm, you know what? I'm going to take up to Fairy, and then I'm going to time wipe at instant speed, I think. So five. Yeah, we're going to try to time wipe at instant speed, see if he'll play something pre-combat. Nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, that's fine. In that case, you can't do the Priest of the Forgotten Gods in response, so I guess that works out in our favor. Cauldron Familiar. Uh, we're going to see that oven come down, which is all right, because we start flickering the Guard Mage, and then I'm not worried about cat. I'm not worried about cats. Uh. <laughs> Gutter bones back in the hand. Alright. I think we're gonna play just the hmm. If I play the Aven Eternal, then I can hold up Dovin's veto as well. I think I'd rather do that just because it's gonna give me the most value. So we'll play the Aven Eternal. Make an army. Let's just go ahead and sack this now. Do the planes. Take up the fairy. Don't ever forget to do your planeswalkers, kids. Ben, talking to you, Ben. Stop forgetting to do your planeswalkers. And I think we're just going to hold up Dovin's Veto here. I want that oven to come down. He's going to do it. Watch. Play the oven for the cat value. Do it. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Sorry. No rampage for you. Okay, not quite the oven, but I think that's just as good to counter. <laughs> Oh, now he'll probably swing Cauldron Familiars. Ah, just to draw the extra cards. Do I let Teferi go down to one? I think I do. Hmm. Do I give him two cards? Do I care if he has two cards? That's the real question. No, we're going to block the cats because right now he's got no way of getting them back. That seems pretty good to me. He's going to get two cards out of it, but I get to keep Teferi at higher counters. Let's play the Guard Mage. Ooh, do I hold up Omen of the Sea? That's an interesting question. Or do I just Charming Prince Aven Eternal after I attack and lose face? I can put the... I don't want to cash into Fairy, so let's plus him up. <laughs> this might be a bad idea. I think what we're going to do is we're going to play this... For, we're going to pay two life and we're just going to Omen of the Sea. Um, their turn because they should be respecting the un the untapped blue now. To an air. Already, this deck seems like it's working out just a little nicer, a little more control, a little easier mana base. Zalt Fairy, honestly, like I should just be playing to Fairy in every deck. Again, I would like to have four of, but it's those darn wild cards, man. It's gonna gain control of my Aven Eternal. No. We get a way to sacrifice it, that's the key. We're just going to swing with both at Teferi. So I'm faced with that hard decision. Blocking my own Aven Eternal or blocking his Midnight Reaper. I think I'm going to block his Midnight Reaper because I'm going to get my Aven Eternal back, maybe. Yeah, that's the plan. He's also going to keep the most counters on Teferi. Ferry. 
so let's see if he's got that oven to sacrifice the Avon. Doesn't, maybe, maybe not. Oh, he doesn't. Very nice. So I am going to get that Avon Eternal back. That's a scry here. I do not need any more lands. And, oh, I've got enough Charming Princes, but I do like that life. I do like flickering. I'm going to keep the Charming Prince and flicker Avon Eternal. Oh, has he got something now? Now that the Omen of the Seas out of the way? No, he does not. All right, we'll take up Teferi, because that's just the thing to do. Don't worry, I got this. Hmm. Let's go two in the air. I think we're just going to Charming Prince here and flicker our Avon Eternal. Yeah. yeah. It's just too good. Untaps it, gets us another token. And we can hold up mana for Omen of the Sea to scry at the end of turn. Oh, I can play Cavalier of Dawn with that too. No, we're going to save Cavalier of Dawn. Not a finisher, but a uh, removal spell. We're already doing okay on the aggro plan. Ooh, he's going to draw for four life. Ow. Looking for answers. Oh, I'm going to get to end. Oh, don't, don't jinx it. I was going to say, we're going to get to end the video on a win here with a different deck that we've been playing, but like, I don't, ooh, that's not jinx it. Claim the firstborn again. Ugh. Ugh. I don't have any flyers. Well, I still get to keep Teferi. Okay, no, I don't get to keep Teferi anymore. <laughs> Whatever non totem creature you control dies. Ugh. Oh, man. I'm just getting those cards. Oh, I'm going to block his gutter bones. Like, this is one thing. Like, yes, Teferi's going to go down, but this is preserving my life total. He has spent a lot of damage trying to kill Teferi. So we'll block the gutter bones with a token. And I do get both of my creatures back. You know, theoretically. Assuming, again, that he doesn't have the, the oven in hand this time. Let's crack this omen since it's not really doing us any good. There's Flicker of Fate. I do not need any more lands. Do I need Flicker even? I don't. We need more gas. Something's actually going to do something. Well, time life's not bad if he starts creeping ahead on board again. I think I'm going to swing out here, see if he'll block with the Midnight Reaper. Block with the Reaper to draw that card. He's really digging. I don't know what his answers are. Okay. Do I have enough mana? One, two, three, four, one, two. I have enough mana to both make a token and flicker the Aven Eternal, which I think sounds like a good plan to me. So exile the Aven, untap, get a token, and then I think we just pass the turn. Make sure we make a soulful token. Human peasant. Human creature. Why do I think peasant every time I see this picture? This is beautiful art for a token, but I do like the soldiers out of Theros a little better. There's the oven. Too bad he's got nothing to sacrifice to it. And that's a great target for Cavalier of Dawn. I will gladly turn that oven into a 3-3 golem. No attacks, no creatures, no play. You got? What do you got? Oh, okay. I'm going to sack his own Mayhem Devil for a food to get the cat back doesn't seem like a great play but I mean if that's all you've got like a dork well, play the land so we blow up the witch's oven and he sacks the mayhem devil in response and builds up one of our one ones I think I'm okay with it I mean if he leaves the mayhem devil which looks like he's gonna do then he can sack in response but then he doesn't get a 3-3 three, three. I think that's even better, because then I get to swing out. Sack it for food to get the cat. That's all he can do, right? But he doesn't get the 3-3 three, three golem token this way. Uh, 
Oh no, my token. <laughs> Man, if he wants to resurrect his cat to block something, I'm 100% okay with it. I will attack for five. Once he lets me. This went much, much more smoothly than the other games have. Oh, I get to close the video on a good note. Yes. Yes. Oh, I guess he's sick of that Aven Eternal. <laughs> All right. Bring back the cat and block my token. Do it. Do it. That's what I figured. So then now he'll bring back the cat on, what, his turn? I mean, he can block my Cavalier. Doesn't have Trample, but I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna win the game that way. Oh, that's pretty good. Do I have any enchantments in the graveyard? I do. Look at that, Omen of the Sea. Love it. I don't get to flash that in on his turn. Oh, oh, the value, the value. This is looking good. This is one game, best of one that I've played. Sure, the cat comes back. Yeah, when I lose a life, he gains a life. Gutter bones. Just never getting rid of that gutter bones. Now we'll omen. What can we find? Oh, it's just so mean to get another flyer on the table after he spent. A rare card to kill my common. Multiple time lapse. Feels good, man. Feels good. All right, do we swing out? I think we do. We only have four. That's fine. You can block my token with that cat all day. Still taking two, and I'm still going to get my Aven. Two, three, and I get to make a token. Oh, so good. I mean, I am good with that turn. Sacks the gutter bones. Interesting. Oh, that's waiting on me. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? Why, why is nothing happening? Oh, it's this freaking Castle Ardenvale. Keeps passing me priority for reasons. Because I can do stuff, so Arena is expecting me to do things. That's fine. Get a cat. You can gain a life. Pretty sure he's still dead. He's got to play the gutter bones. Yeah. Now what? Sack it to make food to get the cat back. Two attackers. I'm just gonna make a one blind and just keep swinging out, right? I think that's the plan. We're slowly gonna get him down there. Ooh, that should just do it, right? That should just do it. Let's swing out first. Let him tap down his oven, and then we'll then we'll kill the oven. Because I am sick of these cats. But I'm pretty sure he can't stop this. Declare blocks. Make a food. Bring one of the cats back. Brings him up to four, and he's taking, I don't think I'd have done it that way. Oh, he couldn't have blocked anyway. It was tapped. Two blockers, yes. So he blocks a two, two, brings the cat back. Then he's gonna take the gain of life. Oh, but this is the thing, he has to block with both and he's tapped down with his witch's oven, so he's, can't, he's not gonna be able to bring the cats back after this. So this is just prolonging the inevitable. I mean, that takes him back down to three, but he's got no way of bringing the cats back. This is not a good move on his part. Did I keep saying three? I guess I kept forgetting about the Aven Eternal. Yeah, so he's a one. And nothing going for him. Drive this nail home? Yeah, let's just go ahead and put the nail in his coffin. There it is. And we did it. We slowly ground out the value that we were talking about at the beginning of the video. Woo!
and we got the rank up. All right, this is perfect. Like, we, we won a single game. We ranked up. We demonstrated the proof of concept is sound. Probably needs tweaking. Probably could be better. I need more rare wild cards to make this deck work. But um, for the low levels, I think it's it's good enough. Make some good plays. Make good decisions. Make your opponent make bad decisions. Okay. Well, we will close out by opening a Theros pack. Because, ooh, why not? You see how, how much Theros I've opened when almost every single card is the first card I've gotten in my collection. Love these wild cards. What are you? Landing comes to play. Gain a life. Okay. Know yourself. 3-1. Exile. No one cares. Everybody just wants me to open the rare, right? Okay. Boss's Intervention. That's perfect for our deck. It's a counter spell and it, what is it, dig? Look at the top X card your library. Put up to two of them in your hand. The rest of the bottom of the library are random order and it's an instant. Yes, this is actually really good for our deck. Love it. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for joining the Bad at Magic YouTube channel and we will see you all next time.